Hey everyone, welcome back to QSR Nation, your weekly source of food service marketing and business strategies for success. Here are your hosts, Josh, Beth, Tony, and Grant from the PFS Brands National Headquarters in Holt Summit, Missouri. Hey everybody, welcome back to QSR Nation. As always, we have Josh, Beth, Tony, and Grant here Uh from the PFS Brands National Headquarters in Holt Summit, Missouri to talk about food service marketing and business strategies for success. Today, this is one of Tony's favorite all-time topics to choose, to, to, to discuss, I should say. Yes. It's one of those um, where he starts talking and yeah. we all just walk away for an hour and come back and <laughs> he's still talking. Yeah, quick side story on that. The first time I met Tony, we had to drive three hours to go to a food show and this he would not quit talking about this for three hours. <laughs> but think of how better your life was you after that. Yeah. You're smarter now, right? <laughs> you shed right. so yeah. many tears. <laughs> <laughs> you shed so many tears that day. <laughs> And what we're talking about is value proposition. This goes for both consumers and potential franchisees. Correct, Tony? Exactly. You know, when a consumer um, decides, you know, whether it's to go in for food or a product, you know, they have lots of choices. And for some consumers, the price point is going to be um, what's going to drive them, you know, into your location. Um, for many, it's going to be the overall experience and the value that they feel they're getting uh, for their hard-earned cash. So. Uh, that's why I really am a strong believer in the value proposition for both consumers and then, of course, as choosing uh, a franchise. You know, as a consumer, I, I'm looking for what, what's going to be the best bang for my buck, but not just necessarily, um, you know, in the quantity of food I'm going to have, et cetera. But, I mean, what's my experience going to be like? Are there going to be clean tables inside when I sit down? Are they going to get my order fast because my time is probably more important than my money because that's how I make my money is with my time. So you know, I look at all those things in in that aspect of what's going to bring it through and then the appreciation factor. I mean, do I feel like after I've exchanged my money for their goods that they actually you know, were happy I came in, thanked me, make me want to you know have that great experience so I could come back again. So that, that's all part of building the value proposition package. Oh, I was not like what you said, but you're just like, no, just keep talking, huh? <laughs> Usually we're not done with, like, we're not we ready for you to be, to be so done. Short. Yeah. That was good. That was good and concise. Though. Wow. Yeah. Just, just, just working on it. See, this is about growth, people. Everyone needs to grow. <laughs> and I guess from a personal, uh, personal experience for me, um, back in college, you know, uh, I did just go after, you know, whatever I could find cheapest, you know. So, mm-hmm. um, but so whenever you're determining your own value proposition of what your product is, like how um, good of a product it is. Whenever you set up your advertising and stuff, you know, if you're gonna, like I would have been a college kid then, so that's who I, I knew I was advertising towards college demographic if you're just looking at price. But as you get, you know, a little bit better value in your products, um, you may have to go down different avenues. So that's just something to keep in mind, you know. I want you to figure out what your value proposition is, you know, that's. Yeah. Yeah, the pitch is different per demographics as you get older. Even seasonality can be the value proposition can change for that specific demographics. Exactly, and it's it's okay to have a, a price point piece um, as part of your mix, and because that way you're not alienating uh, you know that consumer. Whether it's um, you know tight budget, slim budget, to just you know someone like me just doesn't like to spend money, um, you know, or um, you know, someone who's just like say on, on that that college buzz. You know, for instance, you know, you know that ramen noodles and peanut butter life. You know, you're looking for <laughs> what, what where's that price point at? So I mean, you don't want to alienate that person, but at the same time, you don't want to build a business off of it because that's hard to retain loyalty. It's hard to, um, I think personally, see constant return on investment on that consumer. I think folks who have a greater experience who feel like they're valued more, who understand that they're getting a better quality product, um, they're going to pay a little more for that, they're gonna, yeah. and they're going to do it more often, and you're going to see higher average tickets with that. So, I mean, that's the consumer that is, in my mind, the longevity, the game plan, right. you know, consumer. Now, you still need that price point piece there, but I don't believe that that's a great area to compete in. You know, I'm talking about retailers. You know, Walmart has shown that if you're big enough, you can be a price point retailer and you'll have the volume to push up but if you don't have the volume of like a Walmart I mean you look at someone like in retail like Kohl's well they're not a price point retailer but they are a value proposition retailer Mm -hmm. and you know when you look at you know different demographics and for department stores favorite store to shop favorite discount store things like that I mean 
Target always outranks. Kohl's always outranks. Mm -hmm. And the reason why is because folks feel that they're just getting a better experience overall. The value proposition is better. But for the price point consumer, a place like Walmart, you know, is you know, a, a driver for them. So right. you have those things. Same way in the food service industry. You know, you've got, you know, certain QSRs have got, you know, great deals. I think there's a lot of them right now that have really really honed in on that price point piece, but to show the value. I mean, um, Wendy's is one of my favorite examples they've done with their four for four. You've got a great selection of, you know, sandwiches out there to go with, you know, the four piece nugget, the fry and, and the drink, and I'll send the bill for that plug later. But, you know, I mean, that's that, that's a great way to have both the price point, you know, and a value piece there because, um, like, if we go there as a family, my kids might grab that, but, I mean, I'm always looking at the premium sandwiches because, you know, I like, you know, I, I'm a Baconator guy, man. You know, I, mean, I like that thing. So, you know, there's there's always that aspect there that, I mean, there's a different level of, of service that, you know, you sometimes you get. I have one particular store I like to go to more often than the other one. Um, and that's just because the experience is different for me. So, again, the value proposition that a consumer gains can d dictate not only you know, where they're choosing, but even within that brand, which location. Yeah. I was just I think 100% for me in my opinion is that customer service is where your value proposition is for me. It, it just yeah, you can have great price points, but if I'm not going to be treated the way that I want to be treated or they don't have the customer service that I necessarily have that aligns with my goals and my ethics and everything else, I'm not going to shop anywhere else. And you know, like a great example is Menards and Lowe's and all the home improvement stores is Menards is known for we're a price point driven company. That's what we are. But we also have the customer service. We're not going to do the extra services to try and increase your cost. But you know you can go in there and you're going to get that great customer service. They're going to give you all the knowledge that you need, but they're not going to try and sell you on everything else and trying to get you, all right, well, if you do this price point, we'll match this, but then you're going to get socked with all these different fees. You just have to look at those different companies that are going on right now. I understand, okay, am I willing to get that bigger price point and get kind of crappier service? Or am I just going to go in there and just go for the service and just know that 100% this is the product that I want and I just want to go for it? I'll tell you what, there's something also about Menards, just not to give them another plug. But <laughs> <laughs> I love Menards. I'm not <laughs> I had some of the best ribs I've ever had, and they're from Menards, and they're in the frozen food section uh -huh. back there. Wow. Amazing. Uh, hey, I, can... I, I, so I, I'm a shopper there, too. I, I love that place. <laughs> Sorry, Lowe's. I mean, I mean. Their little jingle gets me every time. They, they, I swear, I'm shopping in there. I'm like, just say it. Oh, wait, stop. <laughs> don't, <laughs> don't, do it. Don't, don't do it. Man, but good job, Menards. <laughs> <laughs> we would also appreciate <laughs> <laughs> So, but you know, like, again, it, it's all about, you know, the experience that you get when you're there, you know, the, the enjoyment you have. And, again, it, it, it permeates every industry, you know, and I know this is QSR Nation and, and our focus is always about food service. But it's important to understand that, you know, although everyone eats, uh, you know, and so you, you've got a great, you, you know. You can eat at Menards, as you, you just But you, you can. You get ribs there, apparently. <laughs> so, so, I don't even talk about it. I'm getting hungry. <laughs> but, you know, it's one of those things that, you know, if you speak to the value proposition in the consumer, they're going to they're going to continue to come back to you. They're going to promote you, <laughs> like today. You know, they're, they're going to talk about the experiences that they've had, and they're going to continue to frequent your establishment, even if your prices get higher. They're going to understand that they're paying more. They're exchanging for that better service, that better experience for those dollars, and it's worth it. And that's why I think it's so hard for, especially in food service, to compete. On a price point, you know, you, you've really got to have that experiential piece down. There has to be that great customer service, that smile, that thank you, that appreciation for the consumer, that cleanliness. And in our ChampX program, we talk about those six basic steps to, you know, running an efficient and profitable program. But it's all based around basics. Mm -hmm. Do the things that you know to do right, and they'll increase your value. And then other things will follow. And if you lose to a customer on a price point, that they probably weren't going to be a long term. Customer, customer. Anyway, yeah, so. anyway. I mean, it really boils down to your business model. I mean, obviously. Exactly. So um, this also goes for if you're looking to open a potential food service program, if you want to start a franchise of something, look at the value proposition that a prospective vendor was going to offer you. Yeah. Oh, exactly. I mean, support along the way versus kind of a set it and forget it mentality. Um, you know, making sure that, you know, you're investing a lot of money. You know, you could be anywhere from... Thirty thousand um, dollars to you know three hundred or five hundred or seven hundred fifty thousand, depending on whatever model you're, you're looking at. 
but you know, at the end of the day, it's still an investment. So you want to make sure that you're getting the biggest return on that. And so you have to leverage a lot of things, not just cash register ring when you're looking at the ROI. Because again, a, a discount, you know, franchise, if there is, I guess, such a thing, and now there are when it comes to service levels, um, where you're buying the name, you're buying a product, and you're you're pushing it out there your way. Um, you may or may not be as efficient as one that has full servicing behind it. You know, full support. Ongoing continuous, you know, education, ongoing continuous training, you know, all those things that help establish that value proposition with that franchise, you know, or and make sure that you have a long term investment of ongoing support that creates a great experience for you as a franchisee so that you can then pass on that same great experiential opportunity to your consumers. Good. Wow! Yeah, yeah. Wow. I, I really like the value proposition. Yeah. I'm telling you, we all know. We all know. If you had just done that in the three hours I was in the car with him, <laughs> yeah. we would have had two and a half hours. Yeah, of ten and a half minutes instead of three. Yeah. yeah. I just want to make sure you understood, Josh. That was all. That well, was about literally anything yeah. else at the time. Yeah, literally. <laughs> Um, as we can see, Tony's very passionate about this. So if you have any questions, reach out to us at qsrnation at pfsbrains.com. Um, subscribe to the podcast at p- pfsbrains.com slash qsrnation. Uh, anything else you guys want to add? Besides Tony, he's already said <laughs> <laughs> Don't get him started again, right? <laughs> Just definitely look for that support aspect of any, any type of a company when you're a franchisor trying to look for something. Um, that supports 100% what you're going to be yep. needing for the next several years. Yep, the value is what keeps people coming back, basically. Well said, Grant. Okay, everybody, for Josh, Beth, Tony, and Grant, we'll talk to you next week. Today's episode is brought to you by Blue Taco. It's the franchise your location needs for simply Southwest goodness. Visit our website at thebluetaco.com. And remember, it's B-L-U. Be sure to stop by next week for another episode of QSR Nation. And be sure to check us out online at pfsbrands.com forward slash podcast.